talking of Reverend John Priest Greenberg. He's the president of the Association of Charismatic and Pentecostal Churches of Namibia in Southern Africa. He's here tonight. Praise the Lord. He came across seas and across land and is here with us. The Lord will bless him. We also have the Reverend Dr. Hugh Osgood. Reverend Osgood is chairman of the UK Charismatic Pentecostal Conference and is also the founder of the Cornerstone Christian Center in the UK. His ministry has over 5,000 churches in the UK alone. He is accompanied tonight by Reverend Trevor Power. I pray that the Lord who has brought them here, He will take them back safely as they go in Jesus' name. And then we have others, we have others here, and I have to introduce a special man, a man who determines laws, what is and what is not. I'm talking of Honorable Justice Nikki Toby of the Supreme Court. Justice Nikki Toby is representing the Chief Justice of Nigeria here tonight. The right honorable justice to take it. And so we have very, very important people with us tonight. We have all our national overseers from Africa and Europe and the America and the Far East. We have our regional overseers also from outside. We have many national overseers from Africa. They are here tonight. We have our state overseers from across Nigeria. Every state of Nigeria is represented here tonight. Our regional overseers, they are here, and they are here, all of them with their wives. Because they have come to do honor to whom honor is due. I pray that the Lord will reward and bless them in Jesus' name. I am going to do a better introduction because I did it fleetingly. And I want to introduce a mother in the Lord's family and friends. And I want to crave the knowledge of Mrs. Mojisola Ajani, who is leading the family here, the Olowu family here. I want to plead with her to stand so that you can recognize her. Clap very well. Clap very well. Amen. You know, tonight is a special night. And you are here tonight. You are very important to God. You are very important to us. We appreciate your coming. So many who, come, who came in here as invitees. And all of you have sat down here through this evening. I pray that the blessing of tonight will not pass you by in Jesus' name. Thank you and may God bless you.
scripture said in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 7. I just want to read a part of the past, verse 7. The memory of the just is blessed. Therefore, tonight, I count myself privileged to stand here today and go down memory line concerning my dealing with our beloved mother in the Lord. I first met her in 1975 when I came to the ministry. But it was not until much later, about 20 years ago, that I came to know Mama more closely. And rather fittingly, it was in connection with the projection most dear to her heart. Woman Mira Magazine. She has heard that I was a printer and that I was responsible for printing of Yoruba language magazine of Onewanima. She wanted me to handle the printing of the Christian woman mirror. I accepted the offer without hesitation. I could not resist the meek and the gentle manner with which she approached me. She carried no air of pride with her, though she's a woman that we know that is a bundle of meekness. But she spoke politely. In one first sweep, she banished my age-old fear of working with women. I've been nursing that problem over the years, but when she approached me, I can see humility in this place. As we, we began to work together, I was struck by the fact that although she was not a printer, she made great and compelling inputs into our work. To her, there was no room for compromise when or where quality and she worked to ensure that the final output of the magazine was not only qualitative but beautiful. Mama was a good listener and usually was enraptured when we discussed the need to upgrade or to update our machineries. She also taught me more prudence in buying products, always dropping a white bargaining technique with us whenever she sends us an errand. Mama had a heart full of compassion. She always pick up a troubled person at first look, expertly diagnose the problem. And what I know about her, she will not let the person leave without providing solution within the limits of the grace of God in her. I want to tell this old house my experience once I had their financial needs. The first person I remember was my mom and I ran to her. When I came to her, she did not only help me out but Answer me on effective budgeting. The lesson has remained with me today. For all the time we work together, or that I work with her, we never once had a disagreement. It made me marvel at the extent of the grace of God in her. She taught me a lot. Usually, she called me on phone regularly. Then suddenly, about two years ago, I discovered that for one whole week, I did not receive a call. I got worried and I ran to her to ask what was wrong. She politely told me that she deliberately maintained her silence not to call me. I said, why? She told me that because to her, she was always the person calling me on phone and that not once did I call her. I 
was dumbfounded. I told her that I must honor you as the wife of my general superintendent. And that means that I cannot call you on phone unless it was exceptionally necessary. That's why I told her. I have no such strong reason to call her. That's the reason why I did not call her. That's what I told her. She was pleased with my explanation, but still she insisted that I must be giving her call. She gave me that permission to telephone her when necessary. Unfortunately, last time I called her was Friday, April 10th at the retreat ground. Little did I know that that was my last opportunity to speak with her. She left indelible marks on me. Then I say this. The indelible marks mommy left in my life and in the lives of our numerous, numerous children and the Lord will continue to guide us in Jesus' name. Those impressions speak to me daily as if mommy was still alive. Mommy, you are a gem. You are unforgettable. You will forever live in our hearts. Good night, beloved mommy. Till we meet again in the bosom of our Lord. Mommy taught me. Mommy molded me. 
She trained me. She molded me. She made me what I am today. Spiritually. And even her surprise, her calmness. She taught me a lot. I know she must believe me. I found it very difficult to use facets for her. Because mommy lives on. Mommy. I thank God for what he has done. For her commitment, I learned a lot. Anytime she's talking, she would she would say, anybody come to her to ask of anything, she would she would listen to them and say, I will ask something. I'll get back at you. I'll ask something first. And when daddy our person when the people is talking to her, she always say something. Yes, sir. Always watch her. And she taught me how to relate with my husband, how to relate with my children, and how humility and mommy is a visionary, full of upside. She's extremely trusting and trustworthy. She responds with confidence in those who work closely with her, and she was never given to entertain hearsay or malicious comments. She was a clear cut example in holiness and righteousness. She admonished her subordinates with admission of deceitfulness and firmness, love and compassion. You will always find in her a shoulder to lean upon and a bosom to lift the head. That I enjoy working with her for a long time, even until the day she passed on. Was simply an account of her tolerance, fairness, and a deep sense of appreciation for her frailty. Ma Mommy has a deep and penetrating insight into the divine control and eternal destiny of men. She spoke with relish of the soon appearance disposition of the Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, and to the need for everyone earnestly preparing for his coming. Mommy never failed to mention this fact to, to her subordinates and to all those that work closely with her. Let, God, let Jesus come quickly to take us home. Let us live in heaven in peace. This is always a comment. Mommy was energetic and hardworking. In her, in her way to be found the virtue of indulgence, consecration and commitment to all that all one's purpose in life. She did not believe in half measure. Her disposition was thoroughly activity and excellent. She never doubled into any venture impossible. She took her time, seriously gave her best to the venture she believed in her. Mommy, a real capacity of music star. Although most people acknowledge her with the publishing of the, of the Christian women mirror, the truth, however, is that her influence prevailed in virtually every segment of the church. Her contributions are always positive and validated. I remember clearly that in, in many programs of the church, she, 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 she loved, the loss was reduced when money got involved. That is, the loss of money, wastage was reduced. Anytime money is involved in all the programs, we can see. Mommy, she so industrial that she leaves out every part of the Proverbs chapter 31 about the virtuous woman. Mommy was a team player who strongly believed that others in the team had their role to play too. She was not a tough master, but a servant leader who sincerely led others through a personal example, self worthy and self motivation. She was successful in all her endeavors, demonstrated the period with which she undertook a task, that the fact that she succeeded in producing, producing, reproducing her exceptional credentials in most of her subordinates, which she has done in many of us. For me personally, I can never forget her. I can never forget her spoken and unspoken adoration, love and respect for her husband. She understood perfectly the distinction between her love, Family and affection for daddy and 
respect, reference, and permission for the pastor. She always tells me, it's about it. Daddy is not only my husband, she's my pastor. I was there. It was a glorious party. I was with her when she passed to glory. My brethren, we don't need to be sorrowful. Mommy has done something. I was there, I witnessed it all. On Friday, on the 10th, by the special grace of God, Mommy, I asked Mommy, is there anything you want me to do? She said, Mommy, I'm very strong now. I, and you can see I'm saying my strength and not a truth. She was not breastfeeding. She was she was not um, she was she, 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 she was not having stroke as many said. But I said, Mommy, can I just ask you to do something? She said, No, can't you see I'm not a truth? We can see change. But that night myself and the sister that was with me, because we were two, she said, Mommy, mommy said, the sister told me. Can't you see mommy? Can't you see her? You know, mommy, she's a beauty in and out. That is what she is. And I can't say what she was. She was. Because she lives home. Right? Mommy, that night, looked more beautiful. And not only that, we went to sleep. About 4 in a.m. in the morning. I usually have my quiet time 4 o'clock in the morning. And by the grace of God, when it was that time, I woke up, I checked mommy. Mommy was still sleeping. I went and I had my quiet time. After the quiet time, I came to her precisely 10 minutes after, after 5 a.m. Then I said, mommy, I saw her. I said, I greeted her. She said, how are you? I, said, I asked her, mommy, do you want me to do anything for you? Do you want me? She said, no, not now. I said, mommy, can we start saying what I said, no. I said, mommy, she said, I know when mommy said no, then I now left her. She said until after the, the, the state cleaning, because I want to get ready for the state cleaning. I don't want anything to disturb me. I said, okay, mom. If you want to do anything, do it after the state cleaning. When the state cleaning started, money was the one that was even calling us. Faith clinic has started. Then after, during the time of prayer. Daddy was thinking, leave it there. After that, he sang the song, there is a new name written down in glory. Oh, it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. When Daddy was sing, singing that song, Mommy sang the song, and because she, she, was, she always spoke gently before, but since after that Friday night, her voice became louder. And not only that, that very particular moment when she was singing that song, Red Rain, her voice fills the room. So sweet. I have to open my eyes and I say, Mommy's voice is so What is this beautiful voice? And she said, When we sing to that time, there's a new name written down in glory. Oh, it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. She was doing like this. Not going that Mommy was going. She said, Yes, it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Then when the prayer session was going, brethren, that was when many women passed on. There was no, there was no jacket, nothing, nothing. Just a glorious going home. Brethren, and if you look at mommy, mommy looked at it, she was sleeping. My brethren, mommy, mom is not there. Mommy lives home. Mommy, she melted herself into many points and has distributed to all, all. Mother, sister, let us of all the negative. Don't let this die. In a way of oppression, in holiness, and in righteousness, in our transparency, you know what mommy left for us. Let us uphold them. Mommy,
We request everyone to sit down after the service for light refreshment, which will be served in each hall. Our special guests in Hall 4 are requested to please, after the service, to move to the conference room. Our ushers will lead you there after the service for your own light refreshment.
Sleeping, shut 